All right, here we go again. Check up. Good afternoon. Yo. Refresh your browsers, y'all, because today is Thursday, February 9th, 2012. And you're listening to Room 3026 Live. Thank you. Episode 462. It's the next conversation ranging from technology to pop culture. And I'm your host, Damon Nolan. And we're broadcasting live right here in Durham, North Carolina. It is lunch hour in the Onyx Tower. Today, my co-host is Mr. Michael Render. I do this, do this. And as always, we encourage a listener participation. That means that you can join the conversation. All you have to do is join us right here by calling us at 646-929-2689. Again, that's 646-929-2689. Also, if you're right now, you can also chat with us. Go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash Damon Nolan. I want to give a special thanks to Mr. Darren Tyler for providing our theme song. He calls out you. Which reminds me that without you, we would not be where we are today. So thank you so very much for what you do. Hey, welcome. Now, let me turn to the chat room and say hi to those who are walking in right now. I see Mr. Aaron K. White is in the building. What's going on, AK? We also got Mr. Alan Tran in the house. What's going on, Alan Tran? The man. Yep. We got Dyslexic in America. Yo, LL. That's LL. I want to welcome all of you listening live in an archive. I want to say thank you for what you do because we appreciate you. Even on this Thursday after a very important day, <laughs> day I'd like to, to, do a, to do something. I'm going to stop the music right there and ask a question. Mike, what happened? Mike, Mike. Mike, what happened? Oh, no, I wasn't playing. So last night... Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Say so that again. Last say, night, say, say that one more time now. I wasn't playing. The first time ever. This in, is a world history turning event. A, a, a UNC Tar Heel fan speaking as if he did not lace them up after uh-huh. the game. We did this and we did... Oh, uh-huh. I'm, I, I didn't play. <laughs> we'll come back to that, Mike. You're, you're on the bench. Don't go nowhere. We're coming back to you. Anyway, I want to say welcome all of you. Welcome all of you to the, to today's show. We are going to talk about a number of things today. And, of course, we're going to talk about uh, the secret history of Steve Jobs. What are we? What can we uncover about this guy today? Uh, I got some new information that may be very interesting to you. Also got some new numbers on those of us who are more like me. You know, those that uh, what? like to watch television on the internet. Oh. I got some new numbers around that. Okay. I also want to talk about uh, something. Uh, Google just put a smash in Apple's face. I got all that and more on this episode what? of Room 3026 Live. Live, live, live. Live. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. So uh, let me let me go back to the question. So what happened yesterday? What happened last night? Uh, clearly, yesterday Mike Render came in here w- dressed up. He uh, with he the Carolina had blue jersey, Carolina blue jerseys on, and today he's yeah. wearing forest green a forest green t shirt. There's no UNC paraphernalia there, of any there's kind. No, there's there's no Tar Heel gear. What what, what, what what happened? What's going on, man? Uh, the game was yesterday. Okay, so <laughs> what you're saying is, if you if so you would have won today, you would be wearing a different outfit. Basically, no, no. you would wear uh, I don't know uh, a Tar Heel hat, nah. uh, maybe a jacket. Nah. Look, 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 let, 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 you'd be marching look, around in, the room. In the, in the words of my president, let's be clear. Let's be clear. We know that yeah. Mike already had a wardrobe plan for today <laughs> in the event of a Tar Heel victory yesterday. Yeah. We know this. That's yeah. not true. <laughs> yeah. That is not true. I did not have any planned garments to wear uh-huh. <laughs> bearing Carolina paraphernalia or anything I, I, like you, that. You may not have had specific he would have gone specific his, clothing items. Oh, but you had a short list. He would have gone <laughs> to his closet and said, mm, one of the many blue and white uh, deals can I pull out? I didn't have any now? notes taken or uh, I, I, I didn't I, have I, any records of I any just, shades yeah. I could compliment each other. I'm having a hard time other. believing that. Does anyone, does anyone believe that? Does anyone because because I think clearly Derek and I are on the same page here. I don't believe it. I didn't. Um, 
But uh, in any case, uh, yes, Duke came in at the last second. No, they didn't come in. Right? And <laughs> shot. They, were, they dribbled in. They, they were shot, escorted in. Uh, a very powerful. Oh, wait. So this is the. Powerful is, is this, shot. Is this the uh, hackneyed cliche Tar Heel Sour Grapes of, oh, we let them win? Yeah. Is that, is that what this what is? No, that's what it sounds let. like. It was a un you mean Duke forced himself upon uncontested you. attempt of oh, a okay. 50-50 chance of making the gotcha. shot. Gotcha. That was a three-pointer. Okay. Yeah, uncontested. That was a dookie. Uh, that was that, in your face. That, and I got a picture of it. in his face. He, was, you had to yeah, be, he, his you had his to body be, was like this. You had to be close to them right? to be yeah. in their face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that Damon had it right. He's, he's like that Christopher his, Reeves, his old-school Superman yeah. Yeah. <laughs> flying folks. Basically, he shot a block yeah. not quite, Not quite parallel, but... <laughs> He was almost there. Yeah, he was almost eighty twenty. The parallel, he, like half his upper half of the body was almost there. Yeah, yeah, like, 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 like forty five degree angle. <laughs> half that counted wasn't close enough. Yeah. to make to alter the shot. You can't stop me when you are almost flying hey, like man, Superman. So what do you do when it's when it's laid out for you like that? You, you make get the shot. on you do what the you do. bus. You make go the home. shot. No man, you make the shot. That's you what you do. Home. You make the shot. All right. Anyway, uh, I do want to say celebration Go to Duke. all of uh, my Duke fans out I'm there. I'm not so much a Duke fan as I'm an anti-Carolina fan. <laughs> yeah. I, I make no bones about yeah. that. It, I, 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 <laughs> I am just as strongly against UNC than I am uh, against the iPhone. It's, it's, <laughs> ah, it's that, just uh, what yes. happens. I didn't think about that. Yes. That, that, that makes sense now. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's the way I feel about paying for things. I, I, I get that. Yes. Okay. So now oh, th- 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 there's yes. a sense you of see? cohesion yes. that did not exist for me before. I get now that. Now you know. Right. Okay. March this 5th. March 5th, game two. Okay. So. Well. Hopefully you guys go home and practice. Yeah. <laughs> like defense. Your defense. Yeah, like, like defend the three. Come on now. Yeah, that's, it's not news. All right, it's not news. you have you you're you're correct about that. Hey, until they do something different, until they win another way, like until Plumlee, you know, goes <laughs> strong to the basket and wins the game, I, I'll say something different. Merrily then, we roll along. Yes, indeed. Um, I do want to give a quick announcement. Uh, don't forget the Ignite Rally Three is happening next week. Uh, I'm going to be there. That is going to be Thursday, February the 16th, 2012 at the Lincoln Theater in downtown Raleigh. I really want you guys to come on down there. Uh, last year, I know, uh, I think Mike was there with me. Uh, Derek, you were there too, weren't you? I was at and, the Ignite uh, Durham. Durham, right. Yes. Uh, the, the Ignite Raleigh, I have every intention. And uh, the deadline has passed for me for my submissions. It I, is? <sighs> oh, like you really were hurt. I'm not hurt. I was... Uh, all that time, I, I just you just had all that time. I, 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 that's okay. I, I, I am. I am now. Too. I am now ready for the next submission. I even. I even. I had a vote in this. In this too, because I, they, they 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 let me vote on one. And if yours was there, I potentially could have voted on it. And, I, I, and brought I'm, it up. I'm ready now. See, I I I scratched out a, a, a Roman numeral kind of outline for the way that I wanted to deliver. My, well, you got a whole entire week. You would I have know, had but I together. but I was still. D- putting it over my head so I finally got a title that I could live with it's called Grown Folks Are Talking The Infantilization of Social Discourse and What We Can Do About It this is so great I'm so glad you have it today you should have had it no yesterday. that's what I'm just saying it, yeah. it's, it's been it's, I've so been turning great. it over in my head that's okay the next one I'm in. I'm in as soon as the submissions okay. are available. You heard it here first, guys. I, I'm in. I, I told you. I've been thinking about it since the last time, yeah. but I just couldn't get just, an idea that I felt confident enough about just do doing it. this thing. But now, now, now I'm good. So, and, yeah. and I went. I went like I, it was after midnight. Well, I would I, I would encourage you guys uh, if you are in the area. Uh, of course, uh, Dyslexic in America. I'm looking at you right now. You uh, know that would be really cool area, to see Leon. You should come out. That would that would be yeah. great because Leon. Le- yeah, Leon's doing a you. bunch of Leon's doing a bunch of things that would. Yeah, that would be of he could promote be good. one of many entities that he well he, well he can't present he can't present now but yeah I know I'm but just he saying definitely for, come out for, for next time this yeah. I mean this ain't gonna be the last one I know I'm I'm all for the next one definitely I'm, I, I like I said I got a Roman I got a Roman numeral outline now waiting for you well it's gonna have to change up somewhat because well uh, because they're after the elections are over I'm gonna have to alter some of my some of my stuff I'm trying to make mm. it not so political and not so preachy I'm really talking about how people of differing opinions can talk to each other in such a way that is positive and not so negative like a lot of our discourse has been anyway so you are coming to this uh, one right yes, right. yes yeah, I, it's I'm, free it doesn't cost anything yeah plus I want to see uh, I want to see uh, uh, those meddling kids <laughs> Mike Renner you gonna come through man 
Man, I, I don't know. What? I don't know if I'm gonna come through. Really? Well, I, 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 could, I couldn't do my presentation, man. It that, only been one slide oh, called you, Guard the Three. That's all over the call. <laughs> Just Guard the Three. Just one slide. I right. talked for twenty minutes. Man, one, don't let it. One slide. You said what? What you say? Minutes. March fifth. You yeah. have your day. You have your day. So, yeah. so are you coming to uh, Ignite Rally Three? Yeah, I guess. Okay. That's what I wanted to hear. So that's next Thursday, February 16, 2012, right here at Lincoln Theater in downtown Raleigh. It's entirely free. You don't have to pay for it. If you know how I feel, I don't like to pay. He ain't trying to pay. So come early. Come hang out with us. Uh, we're going to be there. So uh, hope to see you. Let's, uh, let's jump right on into Feed Watch and let's dig into Feed Watch. Uh, yeah, some good stuff. Feed Watch. Feed Watch. Yeah. Feed watch. This is where we constantly comb the blog so that you don't have to. Constantly? Well, it's consistently. Sporadically. We give you the news that you can use because that's what we like to do. So, you best not snooze. You will not lose. Unless, of course, you just enjoy singing the blues. Not unlike those... Tar Heel fans today that are definitely singing the blues. We let them win. Yes. <laughs> we all right. <laughs> so uh, the question I'd like to ask today is how smart do you think Steve Jobs was? Depends on how. He was smart they... enough to guard the three. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you he was. Uh, and, and maybe the better question, is, and, and I don't know if grades really speak to how smart someone is. Did you put Ignite Raleigh in the uh, uh, um in the uh, uh, Outlook calendar, did 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 Steve Jobs do that? No, did you? Because oh, I don't no. recall Steve Jobs. No, I was just having gonna, a no, no. I put Ignite Raleigh. I I went to my phone to put Ignite Raleigh into <laughs> I was my. Like, I don't know what. I went to. Uh, How I did went you to, get to that about Steve Jobs? I, I went asked to the question. Well, I no, I went to my. Uh, I was in my phone trying to make sure that I had Ignite Raleigh in my calendar and it was already there. Did you put it in Outlook? I didn't. I don't know. Maybe maybe I, maybe I put it in my Google Calendar already. I don't know. It's hard to tell my Google from my Outlook. So from the way my phone is set. I'm sorry. How smart would you say Steve Jobs was? It really depends on how you measure intelligence. Okay. Well, where do you think high school GPAs fall into that question? That is a really good question. I would imagine not much. I am I am fairly different in my in the way that I operate and the way that I deal with people now than I was in high school. A lot of people, their their personalities are fully formed. For me, I think shoot, I'm almost fifty. I mean how do I know how different I am now? I don't even remember too. So GPA. Now, if we look at there, there's there's a genius factor, right? Which kind of like there's a, what is your uh, what is your intelligence factor, uh, your quotient, which we call intelligent quotient, yeah, right? The, the IQ, IQ standardized test. What that number is compared to what your GPA is. Now, there I've heard many things people say that you know GPAs don't really reflect how smart you are. Maybe it's just how well you did. You did schoolwork. Statistically speaking, from the standpoint of higher ed, GPA is not that good of an indicator as to how well you will do in college either because a lot of people, a lot of kids with uh, substandard GPAs, Mm -hmm. it wasn't because they weren't smart as much as they were bored. They could care less because they didn't do anything that that, that tweaked them, that, that inspired them. So I would think, as it relates to this story, Steve Jobs could very have easily had a really poor GPA and he found his passion as an adult and became an overachiever. How close am I here? Well, uh, and I, I like kind of like what I guess is Salid Houdin, Salah Houdin, Salah uh, says Houdin. in the question, welcome to the show, first of all. Hey, dude. Um, but uh, Sa- first Sa- offender. Salah Houdin says, you know the old cliche that identifies the upper management in a boardroom as being the smartest, smartest guys, guys in, in the, the room. room. Yes. Ratio of mental age, age to chronological, chronological age, that's the IQ. Einstein uh, flunked out of school twice, but yet one of the smartest uh, men, or at least he asked the right questions, uh, in, 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 when he when it mattered. Well, I do have some numbers. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but the FBI um, actually did some research on Steve Jobs. I guess when he uh, really? applied like, for a that's job, what were, that's what they were doing. That's what uh, that's what they called it. The FBI. The FBI has just released a 191 page background check on uh, Steve Jobs that was done back in '91. Um, Jobs, when, when he was considering a post at the George W. Bush administration, I guess that's the George H. W. W. Bush administration. Um, 
And anyway, some of the things we found out from this is that uh, during his, uh, his years in high school, Homestead High School, to be exact, from 1968 to 1972, in which many of us believe our education system was uh, in a really good place, his, um, his GPA looked like 2.65. 2.65, which in the case for those of you that know, 2.65 is probably close to B's and C's. Mm. As a matter of fact, you can find this right now if you want to. You go to, I think it's page 79 in the FBI report. You can actually see this live. You can go to the page and you can see uh, that information there. We also learned some other very valuable information. I don't know how valuable it is to us today, but um, he did partake in um, drugs. Uh, illegal drugs at that which included marijuana and LSD while they were in college yes shocker so I don't know if that makes you any smarter or not but uh, you know here's a guy that clearly lived right that lived his life um, did okay in school but not but not superb one of the things I remember when I was doing Amway this is many years ago um, they said sometimes it's the C student who ends up leaving school to create a business where the A and B students apply for a job. Right. And maybe this is a, a case of that of that very thing. Um, there's also another piece of information that, I, that we, we get out of this report. And I'm sure as more and more of us begin to sort of walk through this report, again, it's 191 pages, um, we see that uh, Mr. Jobs was pretty successful at delegating tasks to people. Matter of fact, someone described him in the report that there were two individuals who were acquainted with Mr. Jobs while they were employed at Apple, and they offered some favorable comments concerning Mr. Jobs. They stated that he was strong-willed, stubborn, hardworking, driven, which they believe is also why he was so successful. They further stated, however, that Mr. Jobs possesses integrity as long as he gets his way. However, they did not elaborate on that. He's a nice guy as long as you do what he tells you to do. But it, when you <laughs> when you go against the grain, it's over. That's funny because it seems that he has made his bones out of doing just that societally. Yeah. Well, how we, ironic is that? Yes. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. I look at the chat room and I see uh, Salah Houdin has uh, put out some interesting comments. This education via institutions are mostly meant to dumb people down and make them more tractable conformists, I, if you will. I, I, I think that is... That's interesting. That's as large. I am yeah. largely in agreement, but there are exceptions on both sides of the institutionalized education equation. There are some... Uh, exceptional students, which make that system uh, 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 cater to their to 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 their genius. Uh, Einstein is a is a is a fine fine example. And then there are some say there uh, you've got an exceptional teacher within those institutions that choose to 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 to, uh, to deal with you as as an individual and not as part of a conformist machine a socialization machine there are there are exceptions on both sides that that that, that I, I i i the way i look at it and, and of course i'm a generalist right now because i'm sure that there are i see that there are a bunch of exceptions that people are talking about here but i i do feel to some degree if you looked at the history of our education system it was to create employees it was to create workers right that, we that, educated we, we created people to do jobs and that is essentially where our education system is today and i think to 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 if you look at some of these great uh, innovators, people who have left our system and created things outside of the box, it is very much for that same reason, is that they are, uh, oh, hold on a sec, and I see that, uh, thank you, LL. this Lexic in America uh, is chiming in, and he has his hand up, thank you, uh, LL, let me turn to you, uh, but I will say this, as, as while I'm bringing him on the phone, is to say I, I, that, that once you get outside of that that area and you can be creative and innovative and you're not thinking about the confines of your box i think you can create just about anything you want the sky's the limit let me turn on the phones i see uh leon is on the phone what's up man yeah i was gonna say steve jobs was a dyslexic and to measure a dyslexic in a lateral frame of thought by gpa is almost offensive 
That is so helpful. That is so insightful. Not uh, that, and, and that really adds a whole nother, a third dimension to this idea of the measurement of intelligence. That that measurement is not a is, is not a two dimensional proposition. Right. Because what happens is lateral thinkers are people you train to be workers, and they see everything step by step. You can't tell a lateral thinker that a cat started at A and ended up at B without telling him the cat ran. All you have to do is tell a dyslexic who's a very global thinker that a cat started at A and ended up at B and running makes sense. So when you look at people like Steve Jobs, when you look at people like Bill Gates, they see a very global picture, and it's hard for them to communicate with lateral thinkers. So when you take people through school, you train them their whole life how to think like everybody else, and you measure how much you do think like everybody else. But then when well you stated. get a job, they want you to be a global thinker. Exactly, uh, and, and I, I would I would put uh, uh, I would put ADD and and some at, on the early scope of the autism uh, uh, continuum as as nonlinear thinkers as well. Right. So a lot of these so a That's lot of these things that are that are seen as 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 ailments are are are, are simply. Non-linear thing. Uh, you you might be interested in this book by a guy named Tom Hartman, which T H O M, and I think it's two ends at the end of his name. It, it, it's hunters and a gatherer's world. The idea where there were in in, in uh, uh, caveman times, uh, there were those linear thinkers who were really good at building up the building up the the the, the what passed for cities, but then there were these other nonlinear thinkers who were capable of taking in lots of different stimuli simultaneously so they would know before the rest of the group when the bear was coming and how to get the heck out of there. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it. I'm gonna Thank go you very much, dude. Until the side. I just wanted to chime in. Hey, man, appreciate it. All right, uh, let me use this to uh, switch gears for a moment and bring up another story that's uh, in the news right now. I, I love that story. Yeah, well, I like it, too. It definitely leads to good conversation, uh, something we may want to explore, right? Uh, but one thing I want to I want to move to is something that we talked about last week or the week before that when we were talking about social TV, and that are the numbers for those of us who are cutting our cords. Real quick, uh, right back, to the, uh, back to the other. It's called the Edison gene. It talks about Thomas Edison and how he was a nonlinear thinker and he would have been diagnosed as partially autistic or something like that. Anyway, the Edison gene was the was the name of the book. Cool. I, I just I, when I talked about it earlier, I gave you the subtitle. Um cut uh, cord cutters. Cord cutters. Now of course, Mike, let me look at you for a second. Uh are you a cable subscriber? Yes, because my apartment complex provides it. Okay. Derek, you're a is direct TV or you're cable? I am straight up cable. Okay. Um and I am not a cable subscriber as it pertains to the entertainment uh side, but I do have cable for the internet. Um and there's some interesting numbers that are coming out now from Nielsen who did a study on the uh the use of I guess uh, internet broadband uh, versus broadcast TV. And there's some interesting numbers that are coming into play here. Uh, so uh, coming from TechCrunch today, uh, we have some numbers that basically say that uh, homes that have both broadband internet but only free broadcast TV, which is what I have, we have those things called rabbit ears oh, right, right. that uh, have those little balls of uh, tin foil on the end. I don't know why they do that, but it looks cool. Um, does, does this still work since in, since in the day of uh, digital television? Well, we do have televisions now that uh, will translate that signal into digital. See, I had to bu- I had to have a box to 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 for mine to do that, and then my then that television broke. So the older um, it's uh, and I said I'd screw this. I said screw this. I got a day job, man. I'm yeah. getting cable. <laughs> The, the, the older TVs that we have in the house do have boxes. Right. Uh, the newer TVs, it already comes, you know, inside. But uh, anyway, there is a rise of people who are doing this very same thing that are very much like me. They said, you know what, I'm not going to pay for cable. I'm just going to watch what comes on through the, the broadband or through the uh, broadcast. And whatever else I want to see, I'll watch via the Internet. Um, it looks like 5%, which is not a whole lot. But uh, uh, less than 5% of TV households, the number has grown to 22.8% over the past year. In addition, the behaviors within these homes are unique. These broadband, broadcast-only households, like mine, stream twice as much as the general population. 
says Nielsen, as uh, they watch half as much TV. The broadcast-only home spent 122.6 minutes per day. This is those of us who have the antennas. They watch 122.6 minutes per day watching TV compared to the cross-platform homes, which is 265.5 minutes. Uh, Not surprisingly, then, they stream more video at only, now check this out, 11 minutes. 11.2 11.2 minutes is what the average person who has a broadcast television watches per day via the other Netflix, Roku, Wii, Xbox, whatever that may be, versus five hmm. minutes for the traditional home. So if those of you have cable, you may watch less than that. Overall, really? Yes, that's what they said. That is counterintuitive, you would think. Mm-hmm. But maybe not so much as... The idea that if I can afford 100, 200 bucks a month for the cable broadband package, I may not have as much time. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just, that's yeah. the only analytics explanation that makes sense to 265 me. 265 right minutes per day. And I think some, a lot of that is going to be commercials. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a, that's a good mean, point. Out of well, every hour, you're spending 20 minutes in commercials. But and give or take, depending upon what channel you're watching. If you're watching like HBO or whatever, I'm sure you get more minutes of that. But well, and if you if you do like I do, which is more often than not, just put it on the uh, uh, the the DVR. I'm going to fast forward through the commercials, especially being that mostly it's just on his background mm. anyway. It, uh, you know the the the, the Colberts and, and the, uh, the 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 Daily Show, which you can get without without cable, right? The it's that's stuff that you can do while you're reading your feeds at true one thirty in the morning that's true <laughs> that no that's true i mean you can definitely do that i mean i i think for me definitely you know it's it's one or the other it's either going to be switching uh and I, and they didn't ask me about about the laptop because i watch on laptop and last night i fell asleep watching netflix from my phone um so i don't know if they count that or not but some other interesting uh analytics that comes along with this regardless of how many of us choose to watch our television, the majority of TV households, that's 90% of us, still pay for a TV subscription, and roughly two thirds, that's 75.3%, pay for broadband, which is pretty much what I do. And I don't see myself getting rid of that anytime soon because there will be no other options at this point. Mm. Right? I mean, I'm not, I don't see myself paying for um, cable again anytime soon, um, but I definitely don't see getting rid of the internet because what else would I, I mean, how else would I get there? I get that. So. So anyway, that's that's uh, some interesting information but there. But the more the more we talk about this, the more I'm beginning to see how my cable is really a luxury. It is. It is a luxury. And I could in theory get that same value, that same feature, that same service mm-hmm. if I just use what I had a little differently. Um little bites, let me say hi to you first and also random brain activity, Bob. I think that's Bob H, right? With the exception of the uh, HBO, yes, correct. I, I always forget uh, which one is which, but uh, random brain activities. Bob H, welcome to the show. You two also guest three two zero nine. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. But Little Bite says uh, DVR. Some shows won't allow you to fast forward through the commercials anymore. Or I've noticed what? that they let you fast forward at the minimum speed. Really, I have not. I have not noticed this up to this point. Really? Yeah, they get. They're getting smarter, dude. You. They're that will smart. that will be that will put me one step closer to cutting that cable. Yeah. If uh, if you if you if you take away that feature to which for for which I'm paying, I I'm I'm closer to gone. Pew. Mm-hmm. Well, I I know for me, I someone called it. Um, I think it's like entertainment gouging or entertainment bulimia. Oh, not, what is the word they used? Essentially, what I like to do is watch a number of shows at once. Ah, uh, right. So Instead you're binging. Binging. That's the word they use. Yeah. So I typically will will watch a number of, of, of episodes until I just get sick and tired of doing it, and then I'll go away. And this typically happens on the weekend when I really don't have a lot else to kind of do, and it's kind of relaxing. That's when I'll do most of my television watching. During the week, I don't really get much in. Um, but uh, so, so, so I do see that I'm not alone, and I felt better about this. Uh, although when I was at that social TV um, uh, presentation panel discussion, I was the only one on the panel that was cut that, that cut their cord 
Um, and if I can get rid of my phone, I would be even better. I, I haven't had a landline in, in years and years and years. I mean, it's voice over IP, but uh, I still, still want to get I, rid of it. Yeah, it's, it's just not doing me any good. The only people that call me on my landline are those that don't have my cell number, and they don't have it because I didn't want them to have it right. again where they're trying to sell me something. So. Right. I really uh, like to get rid of it. It doesn't do good. Uh, the other question I would ask you is, with your current uh, cable vision cutting status, were you in a position to watch the game live? Uh, Without having to go to a bar, which is probably which, what. Which, I, which one? I was talking about the, the Super Bowl. No, the well, but yeah, the Super Bowl. I think the, either one. This, the, how about the Carolina uh, Duke game last night? As far as I know, they were they were watching upstairs. Okay. I don't know okay. what channel that was on because I wasn't watching it. I just I oh, just that's right. Twitter. Oh, that, I forgot you. I forgot you had the broadcast. Uh, yeah, the, that's a good. Uh, I forgot about that part. Yeah, I still get a lot of channels. I get all the big stuff. Okay. Uh, I, baby, save you know, some money. Baby, turn your web radio down for a minute. <laughs> turn your web radio up. <laughs> we have some. We have a financial discussion. Perhaps yeah. we need to make. Well, I, and I do want to say this kind of extends over, and I don't know how you guys feel. And as I look at you guys in the room, we are doing this show live. Now, there are some of you who are listening to it live, right? Live. Now, of course, we don't have too many commercials in this show, but uh, then there are some of us who listen on an archive. Right. I would love to get your input on the, the, the version. Now, see, there was a comment that uh, Bob H. just asked. He says, uh, there's very little that I'm interested in enough that I will stop down to watch it live. But yet, you guys are here today listening live. There it is. I would love to get there your thoughts is. on that. And, 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 and uh, there are those of, I, I, I'll mention The Wire in particular. There have been others that I scheduled my life so that I would be there when that next episode was there because I was so pulled into the story. That, that, that it's, it's rare that I care that much, right. but there, it, it, there is the possibility of, that, of content being that compelling to me. Yeah. I look forward to the next time that happens, but uh, 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 like Bob like H, a lot, like yeah. Bob H, I'm hard pressed. Other than a live sporting event, I I'm having a hard time seeing it. Yeah, so I'd like to know if you guys are if you guys are watching or uh, listening live, tell me why you uh, prefer live, and if you're listening in archive, uh, email me at uh, damonnolan at gmail dot com. Let me know you know the preference and kind of how you consume it. All right, let me uh, take this opportunity to take a break, if you will, and let's do a daily booth. That means let's pull out your cameras real quick, and let's see what you guys are doing. Daily booth, daily booth, daily booth. All right. Daily booth is where we go to take pictures. It's a free website. You can go there right now. It's www.dailybooth.com. You can pull out your webcam. You can pull out your cell phone, or you can just upload a picture, whatever is easiest for you. And once you do, share that picture with us right here in the chat room. And uh, if you're listening on our archive show, you can always follow us. Uh, let me know. Go to uh, dailybooth.com and uh, forward slash Damon Nolan. And uh, let me know you're a listener, and uh, we'll follow you back. All right. Now, Mike Render, I see you're pulling out your camera right now. I'm assuming that that means that uh, you do have a picture um i see first of all as i go to the uh, go to the, the 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 place i see ebony b has taken a picture and she goes hey go duke <laughs> mike render was that a house divided are you suggesting to me that there were two of you both wearing opposite size gear in the house oh um, gee, that, that should be a question that you have to ask like it before it was. this relationship moves any further and I, I was, need to know and I was fooled what side of the board are you on my side or their side and see this this is another thing that bothers me <laughs> oh my goodness the Duke fans a lot of Duke fans got created yesterday because that was a conversation that we had when, when we met, and I was like, you know, you watch basketball? Yeah, I watch basketball. Uh -huh. uh, so who you root for? You didn't Carolina ask. Or, yeah, or, yeah. Or that's a question you got to ask. They said, they said, uh, I, I don't root for either. I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's cool. You know, that's all right. You don't have to root for nobody. But then the day of the game, all of a sudden, you a Duke fan. So yeah, I guess that's it's how fun. It it's fun to be on the opposite side, opposite side of you, though. Of me, yeah. Like, what side are you picking? Oh, well, I'm picking another side. Uh, Mike Render uh, shares a picture as well. Uh, he says, with his very sad face, 
we lost. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I really am. I feel bad for you. Yeah, man, it's, it's messing oh. up my whole rest of the week. Oh man, it's horrible. Um, so anyway, feel free to post your picture when you get it, and uh, we'll take a look at it, and also uh, we'll follow you if we haven't already done so. All right, y'all, let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk about Kodak, the camera people. You know, Polaroid, Kodak, the camera people. Coming from Engadget, uh, this year has not been kind for the Kodak people. Uh, last month, the photography uh, pioneer announced that it was filing for bankruptcy. Um and suing Samsung, incidentally. And now the company has let it be known that it will be dropping out of the digital camera business and then some, marking an end to its line of digital point and shoots, pocket camcorders, and digital photo frames. Uh, production will end the first half of this year, and the future for the company will be with printers, brand licensing, enterprise services, and photo labs. Kodak will, however, continue to honor warranties on existing products. Mm. I can't say that I'm surprised, um, and I'm I'm not certain that I would have. And I I can tell you right here now, the only camera that I think I've ever owned would be a Canon. Canon. That's probably the only one I know I've owned uh, that I've purchased. And that doesn't count for those little cheap cameras that you buy at the grocery store for. All green. Yeah. But uh, I'm not really surprised. I mean, I don't really. I mean, I think Kodak, for the most part, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that just a film company for many years? Or am I am I getting that wrong? No, you got it right. Like, like there was like Polaroid, Polaroid, right? Then there was like Kodak, and then there was was there another one, another uh, and and we're going back on this because I mean, how many of us actually take pictures anymore with film? I, I think maybe class. I'm the only one in this room old enough to remember Brownie. Not, yeah, I don't know anything it's about it. It's a little brownie. brown box, and that might very yeah. well have been a line of cameras made by Kodak. It was a little box, and it was brown, and let me see. But is there a different film company that I haven't named yet? Uh, Polaroid. Polaroid, Polaroid, said, Polaroid Kodak. Kodak. I think it. Brownie. Uh, Fuji. Oh, yeah, I'm about a film. That's Fuji. Fuji. Oh. Fuji. Fuji. Well, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, Fuji, was, Fuji came in. Fuji yeah. came in. Uh, that was like, by the what, time Fuji, 90s? Uh, yeah, by the time Fuji got here, it was the late 80s, uh, Kodak was, was, was on its way down. They just was unable to adjust to the change. The, but Kodak, Polaroid and Kodak were the only American companies. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, Kodak is on its way out right now, so uh, I guess the no. biggest thing, yeah, yeah, they're on their way out. So yeah, they've already they uh, they're 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 filing for bankruptcy. They're yeah, selling filed. off their stuff. We're no longer going to be doing point. And, and I think that's wise. I mean, let's be honest. One of the biggest things about business is you have to learn how to be the best at something, right? You have to learn how that, that if you can't be the best at something, that you should get out of the game. That's what I heard. Uh, in my in my years of reading some of these articles, is get out of the game, and I think this might be a good move for them. You know, who who else is gonna do printers and brand licensing and enterprise services and photo labs? But if you were making cameras, like how Who's do you do drop that? how do you drop the ball of like why aren't you the first to make the you know? push digital cameras but were they cameras like but were they cameras well, I'm just though? saying if they were I mean if they, if they, if they, if they not, were if they I were understand. good at doing film and that was their thing and then the one day they said you know what just like Amazon we're going to get into another product or like Barnes and Nobles they're going to get into another product um, Fuji film as uh, Derek pulls up a list Kodak which this I see this is from here. Wikipedia uh, I just lo- went uh, to Polaroid photo- photo- photographic film on uh, Wikipedia I don't know too many other ones I guess Kodak Mitsubishi for film clearly Mitsubishi makes sense cars, to me. TVs, everything uh, uh, like yeah. half of these half of this list of maybe Minolta. 50 company but that was a camera company right Minolta it's hilarious this is, this is specifically photographic film in theory anyway well uh, I, yeah I guess that's there, my there's point there's a list of about 15 companies and about half of them are Either discontinued bankruptcy, or r- r- stock limited. I've never heard of lamography. Uh, Aaron White puts that in. He's a photographer, so uh, I trust that he knows what he's talking Lobo. about. But Ilford, I remember Ilford. Uh, yeah, I never heard of that one. I, I, I again, I, I wasn't willing to pay for a film if I didn't have to, which is one of the reasons why I went to digital. Ain't uh, trying to pay because I didn't have to keep buying film Kinda and then having to get alter, it yeah, get yeah, it uh, yeah. it uh, 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 developed, which was the thing I hated. I have I probably still have film in my house that I never developed because I was like, dude, yeah, seriously, I just never made it to the yeah. It's like I'm just not willing to pay any more money to get these films, these pictures done, and then to realize later on that 
you didn't even like the picture to begin with. I know your finger was in the way. <laughs> like, man, black. he sucks. The flash didn't work. Yeah. So anyway, Kodak is on his way out. Money. I think this is going to be good for them. Focus on what you're good at, right? Be good film people and lab developers and just move on. But here's something interesting, and this is really my stab at uh, at iPhone. And for those that love iPhone. Oh, uh, that never happens. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just my little... Uh, take that. So Google, coming. this comes from Mashable, Google um, says, I want to cut out of every iPhone. Now pay me. As a matter of fact, uh, I want 2.25%. And this comes uh, so on the back and, and of their the reason, spending. If I were on the other end of that request, the reason that I wouldn't say go do something untoward to yourself would be what? Well, you remember that time when Google spent twelve point five billion dollars to uh, to purchase Motorola Mobility? Yeah, I remember that. You remember that? I do not. Well, that? yeah, they had to pay. Remember they had to pay for that. They had to oh, pay. Oh yeah, I do and you remember, remember that. Remember those patents that these companies own? Oh, those. You pesky mean those patents. ones? Yeah. Well, it looks like Google's willing to rack up some money now. This says no, no, no. Continue to sell the iPhone, please. I, I, I actually want you to. Um, but because we now own uh, Motorola Mobility, and we also own now the patents for some of these things that you are currently using give me. Uh, within your iPhone, um, we give would like to uh, give it. Up, we'd like to get baby. a two point two five percent cut of every iPhone that you sell. Um, and by the way, we sent a, we sent a letter to your lawyers uh, to make sure that you know you make that happen sooner than later. So. Uh, just in case you didn't know, that new iPhone 4S that you guys are rocking and doing really well, I'd like a cut out of that. Please, give me. And I don't even think they said please. I think they said... <laughs> you going to do it. Uh, it Maybe, damn it. I'd like that in... <laughs> in I'd like that in uh, $1 bills, please. Mother suck. Uh, unregistered. And I want it delivered to my house. So, I just thought that was funny. I just thought that was really please. an interesting little take that, uh, you know, very much... Like uh, I think what they're doing is is what Microsoft is doing to Google to Android, saying, "Oh, oh, so you want to cut um, of what I got? Okay, well I'm gonna get it from somebody else then. I'm gonna rob Peter to pay Paul." Yep. Yeah. So that's that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, the rap is in the house right now. That's Ryan Bulls. Also, Tim Arthur is here. What's going what on, up? gentlemen? Um. <laughs> Uh, Aaron says, I demand two bucks for every other word you speak on this show. <laughs> nice. I said, uh, yeah, so you got to have to put that in writing somewhere. But this is funny. Google's going to, you know, pimp slap iPhone and Apple. And in other news, and this is a related. See, this is just my little poke at iPhone and Apple. It's because I can. Whenever I see news that goes against Apple and iPhone, I just got to share it with you guys. But uh, you do realize that uh, Galaxy in Germany, uh, that would be Samsung, the Galaxy, tab 10 point, I think it's 10.1, uh, <sighs> they could not sell that device in Germany because Apple put uh, a, a suit against them to say you can't sell here. Well, German, Google, the German Google court... Google is following suit uh, with, a, with a couple of similar... Yeah, so so you want to do okay? So you that how you want to treat me? That's okay. I got you. But German uh, court just ruled. It says no, no, no. They can continue to sell their Samsung Galaxy Tab in our country as you were. Continue. Just wanted to share that little stab with you. So for all of you out there, enjoy. Mike, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Aaron K. White says, uh, I've contacted Blog Talk Radio lawyers, and they agree. Well, since when do we have lawyers? Well, you know we have lawyers. Oh, yeah. But we we are partners with Blog Talk Radio, and they are on our side now. I do want to give a shout-out uh, again. Uh, I know we talked about it earlier, but I definitely want to give a shout-out. We Since now that I can, I can speak about these things. See, this is the thing. I want to speak about it. I have to get permission to speak. I have to make sure my lawyer will approve it. You're not uh, speaking out of, out of- Ryan Boyle. Our leader has uh, has a f- announced in the chat room that we now have 15 Ignite Rally speakers, and you can actually go right here to see all those speakers. Uh, Is one of them called Guard at Three? Uh, no, and that's because you didn't put one in, but it could have been there. 
Um, there is a link uh, here. Okay, you can go actually to see who those speakers are. Just go to IgniteRally.com. Again, that's IgniteRally.com to see which of the 15 speakers will be there that night. And I actually had an opportunity, thankfully, uh, Ryan and the rest of the team will let me vote to pick one of those. And, uh, of course, knowing me, it's all about time management. And there was a really good one out there that I liked that will deal with that, how to really maximize uh, your life, how to live life. Uh, And I don't have the title in front of me, but it is going to be an outstanding, outstanding evening. So you don't want to forget that at all. Um, So anyway, uh, let me see what else they're saying. The special snowflake strike back. So it turns out I have superpowers and so do you. Seven reasons why writers are you know, a-holes, Sliders and Sam Adams, Be Memorable, What I Learned from Mixing Manhattans at 106 in miles per hour. Oh, Manhattan um, is a playing, fine, fine drink. These are, these are, by the way, topics that uh, we voted on or were voted on. Playing Nice in the Sandbox, The Triangle, Silicon Valley, Bombay, and Beijing, Today's Teen, Friend, Foe, or Antichrist, Infinity in Five Minutes, Fuzzy Quantum Pop. What? Friend. Yeah, right. Fringe sports and odd pursuit. Life. This is the one I voted on here. Lifestyle design and the currency of the new rich. I like that one. 11 yeah, things. Yeah, you would like that one. That sounds like. Yeah, you know, the currency of the new rich. I like that. 11 things you should know about Riley. Changing the way we think about money. I want to hold your hand. I like the way uh, we think about money. So let's change that. Let everything be free. Uh, the thriving NC craft beer community and Sierra Nevada's expansion to the state. State. I'm a Sierra Nevada fan, and uh, there was a craft beer talk at the last one. I wonder if this is similar, and in what ways it'll be similar, and what ways it'll be different. I that that one I'm very curious about. I'm a I'm a craft beer fan. Sliders and Sam Adams. Hungry? <laughs> not Sam Adams is not a craft beer, but still, yeah, it's tasty. Fair it enough. is tasty. All right, let me change gears real quick and let's do blog roll. So- roll in. With the poesies, with the hops and the malts of the poesies, is Mmm, beer, beer. Speaking of beer, I had some last night. Come drink some tonight with me at the Casbah in Durham. It's early, so I won't be late for work tomorrow. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Blog Rolls, I'm going to take a look at what you guys are writing, what you're putting out there into the blogosphere. Click the link. Click the link. We have two stories today, and both of them come from yours truly. Today, uh, I have one. This is the historical overview of Kappa Alpha Psi from my blog. Yo. DamonNolan.com. Um, you can go there now. As a matter of fact, it's right. There. It's the latest one. But what I wanted to do, and I've, I've talked about this during dissertation for far too long, and uh, thankfully, I have a, uh, I have been given the okay to change my organization. Really? Because I've been sending you links of, uh, about the Boy Scouts, but I've changed my organization to my fraternity instead to I look see. at uh, to look at the organizational commitment mm. of those who are volunteers in the fraternity. Okay. So, uh, mm-hmm. so, so Fair far. Enough. Sneak peek, like what have you, what what have you came up with, or what are you leaning well, towards? I think the the overall, I think as far as the study itself, right? I mean, that hasn't changed for me. There's still really good information about that. But in changing the organization from Boy Scouts to a fraternity, I get to look at what I originally wanted to look at, and that is what happens during your induction process. Uh, when we train you during and afterward, does that have any any value in keeping or creating uh, committed members? Right. Okay. Okay. And obviously, if you can figure out what that is, if it is something we're doing or if it's something that we're doing before and after uh, something that we just we just find as members, we'll figure that out. And then we can we as managers can make those decisions to do a better job of training, if that's the case, or finding better people from the very beginning or a combination of the two. So that's kind of where this is going. So anyway, I just wanted to share that one with you. And I have one other one. And this one here is called Brainstorming a Professional Mentoring Program at Work. You know, there's, there's probably a, a trend here 
uh, as I think about this, and that is the whole mentoring concept, right? The concept that uh, at our very job here, we got some really smart people who have done amazing things, whether they were working at a Fortune 500 company or whether they worked at a place like IBM, for example, for many years. I'd want to know what can we learn from those people and how to move up the corporate ladder. What are some of the lessons that we can learn from that? And so in this one, I wanted to put together a, uh, a mentoring program here at North Carolina Central University. And here are some of my initial thoughts on how we could do that. Don't know if it's ever been done. I know in these large companies, they have huge programs with big budgets and they can afford that. But for some of us who don't have a budget, and is it possible to, uh, to create a program? So anyway, check out those two links there. You can uh, see those. And uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Have you done that before? Um, yes, and Aaron K. White, I had one, but I checked your link earlier and it didn't work for me. So I don't know uh, what it is, but you do have one. Let me see if it comes up to me now. I went there earlier and the link was broken. It says, how POW saved my Ruby on Rails education. Oh. And I almost said POW at first when I first saw it. I was like, how does POW save my, but how POW? How POW, uh -huh. brown cow. It's a it's a it's a, a, a development environment for Rails on uh -huh, apps uh -huh. called POW. POW is a zero configuration rack server for the Mac OS ten. It makes developing uh -huh. Rails and rack applications as frictionless as possible. Racks on racks on racks. On racks on racks. Man, I gotta talk to uh, AK Dub about something. Okay. Well do talk to him. Doom, doom, doom. I want you guys to go check out my boy Aaron K. White and go to AaronKWhite.com. That's AaronKWhite.com. Check out his latest story, How Pow, Pow, Kung Pow Saved My Ruby on Rails Education. Thank you, sir, for sharing that with us. Indeed. And next time I click on the link, make sure it works. And make it big like you did the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Hell. You are too funny, man. All right, um, let me jump back to uh, two final stories before we get out of here. Uh, the first one that we have is uh, Google finally is getting ready to release their cloud storage uh, in the coming weeks. This comes from Gizmodo. Google Drive is what some people are calling it. But according to the Wall Street Journal, Google is even closer than ever to launching the company's cloud-based storage service, which will compete with services like Dropbox. Now, just as a... Apple's iCloud. As an aside, you can buy, you can not even buy, you can download applications and executable files that make your Android, iPhone, and or desktop connect to your Google Docs and behave in exactly the same way. You have to, you have to have this, the software on from the client side, but as a point of fact, Google Docs is already serving as that type of application for many of us. Well, that's pretty much what I was going to say next, is to say I don't really know what's going to change because I can put just about everything in there and get to it from my phone. My, my money says that the only difference is they're going to develop the apps and a web-based interface for the, for, for the client side so we don't have to download somebody else's stuff. All right. Um, so I will say that... Uh, Instead of the third-party apps that that currently exist, there are no. Th there is going to be a free version. Uh, this we're we're talking about Google, so there will be a free version. I'm sure we there are will talking be. Talking about Damon, so you, yeah. if this was a pay-only so thing, you would be hearing about it here. Yeah, <laughs> I try to look out for you guys. Okay, uh, appreciate you got that kind of love for us. Yeah, I appreciate. That. I I wouldn't do anything that I wouldn't ask you guys to do. Oh, okay, or I wouldn't ask you guys to do something that I wouldn't do. To put that the other way, but uh, anyway, there is a I'm free option. The love, man, I'm feeling the free love. Yeah. There will be a paid option for those of you who want to go a little bit more. You you pay for what the services, the features you want, <coughs> as Derek likes to yeah, say. Yeah, e.g. the extra space, I would as assume. Yeah. Uh, so I just want you to be aware of that. Again, I, I, I don't have any other information at this point in time about how much data you can store. I don't know how much it's going to cost. I don't know any of that details right now. But do know that it's coming very, very soon. Um, personally, I'm going to continue to stick with uh, Google Docs as it is because it pretty much does everything I need it to do. Um, right. I was looking at box.net yesterday and I, I'm not I can't say that I was so impressed really it's kind of like oh okay there's lots of things that it won't do yeah I mean it's like okay cool and Mike you actually made a comment the other day I mean you you work you use Google Docs for some of your own work yeah you used to walk around with a uh, hard drive no I don't 
and now you don't have to. Anything yeah. you want to work on, you can put it in uh, Google Docs, come to work, do it, and then come back, put it back, and and go back home and continue your work. So pretty much, yeah. And for my Mac, I don't have any word processing software, so I use Google Docs to create documents. There you go. So, huh. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, th- that's that's good stuff. Now let me uh, let me talk uh, briefly about uh, some other information. Uh, we talked earlier about Steve Jobs in a report that the FBI put together. Now let's talk about uh, Mark Zuckerberg. That would be the CEO uh, and founder, creator extraordinary innovative thinker out of the box guy who i don't think he ever finished harvard did he i think he went to school or wherever he went to school and then he he didn't finish correct okay if, if, as memory serves anyway it's from what i remember right, right. Uh, but anyway uh i have numbers on what his salary looks like based upon his ipo information that they submitted um is anyone interested in in knowing how much he made Probably. only you want to take a marginally guess? Take take a guess. How much money do you think he's making? I don't know. Salary wise, his his reported net gross. What what? I don't know. Just throw a number out there. Probably. Let's say fifty mil. That's okay. probably high. The uh, fifty for a salary. Yeah, I'm not saying how much he's worth. I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, what he reported. I don't know. Fifty. That might be between his net and his gross. I don't know. Okay. okay. I'm just guessing. So, how much do you think that comes out to a month? don't know so you think 50 million dollars a year is what he's making uh mike yes. what say you what do you think his salary is yes steve Jobs' salary what was his salary? Uh, nothing uh, a dollar uh, i see it depends on whether you count his his uh, uh dividends or because some uh, some ceos will give themselves a one dollar salary and just take the stock dividends and use that as their salary because it is taxed at the Mitt Romney rate, which right. is why it is the Mitt Romney rate. Well, that's a good point. Well, let me give you the number. It is $500,000 is his salary. Per month? Uh, I'm going to assume a year. Let's assume that that's a year. 500000 a half mil? Yeah. That is... I was off by a factor of 100. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ray. <laughs> In addition to that five hundred thousand um, dollars, he also gets a forty-five percent bonus. There it is of his base salary. Uh, there could therein could be the difference between that off by a factor of ten and closer to reality. Right. Uh, and the COO Sheryl Sandberg makes three hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to assume that's a year. So uh, there's probably a perk to uh, sort of running your own show, if you will. But let me uh, options and bonuses is where the real money comes. Hey, if you can do it, man, all power to you. Don't forget to hire your boy. I hate not appreciate you. Anyway, sixty seconds. Let me uh, welcome and say thank you to Aaron K. White, Alan Tran, DB Funky, Dyslexic in America, Guest Three Five Two Eight, Little Bites, that's Marianne, Random Brain Activity, The Rev, that's Ryan Boyles, Tim Arthur, and all of you listening live in an archive. Thanks again for hanging out with us today. Don't forget, we're here every Monday through Friday at one p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on BlogTalkRadio.com forward slash Damon Nolan. Also. If you haven't, you can get that the higher quality version over there on youtube.com forward slash Damon Nolan. You can follow us online. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus. And uh, if you like the show, like it, follow it. That way you can stay connected with us. Anyway, it's going to do it for us. Have a wonderful Thursday. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Mike Renner, take us out of here. Deuces. 10 seconds. Deuces. 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 No, sorry.